everyone here. I'm Mayra. I'm sure most of you readers have had the fortune of being blessed with amazing partners. I thought my husband Tyler was an amazing partner too, before the reality hit me with full force. He used to be a loving boyfriend, but everything changed after marriage. I discovered that he was a greedy man and he often made me buy him expensive things. Jay had a better job than him and he barely contributed towards anything. I should have left a long time ago when he started to get financially and emotionally abusive. However, a surprise pregnancy and my undying love for Tyler made me stay. Guys, it was a huge mistake. I won't even get into the details of how cruel and uncaring Tyler was during the pregnancy. He was of absolutely no help at all. Since I don't have any family, I heavily relied on my father-in-law Max and mother-in-law Vivian for support. Unlike many in-laws, they were actually very nice people. It was due to their help that I was able to safely give birth to my baby. However, things took a dark turn after my baby was born. I had a home birth and natural delivery. So Tyler and I didn't have to go through the hassle of hospitals. He didn't want me to spend money on hospital bills anyway. That would have been a red flag if I wasn't so blind in love. Because I ignored that, this is what happened after I gave birth. My baby was born at the break of dawn and by night, Tyler had changed from being happy to just uncaring. I was nursing my baby when Tyler walked into our room and said, why are you still up with the baby? You need to go sleep right now. I'm sure your boss won't tolerate you being late for work. What are you talking about, Tyler? I don't have work tomorrow. I'm on maternity leave. Who said you get to have maternity leave? I'm sure I made it pretty clear that you need to get back to work as soon as possible. I really couldn't believe that I was having this conversation with my husband. Yes, he had been pushy about me going back to work soon, but it hadn't even been a full day since I gave birth. My hormones were already all over the place, and with a crying baby, my emotions were high. Not to mention the fact that I had a natural birth and was super exhausted. So I was very irritated by Tyler's words. I said, Tyler, this is not funny at all. You need to keep your jokes to yourself at least for a few days. What makes you think that I'm joking? Am I laughing, Myra? Who told you this is a joke? Are you stupid or something, Tyler? I literally gave birth today. I can't go to work tomorrow. Why? What seems to be the problem? I understand why you took maternity leave. You didn't want to work in case it ended up hurting the baby. However, the baby's born and safe now. I don't see why you shouldn't go back to work. Never in my life had I ever thought that my own husband would be so stupid. I thought that he knew what a terrible condition mothers can be in after giving birth. It was downright cruel to joke about this, let alone suggest something seriously. Now, my emotions were starting to get the best of me and I started to cry a little. I said, Yes, the baby has been delivered, but my body has been through a lot. It is almost impossible for me to go to work tomorrow. You can't expect me to do this. All I'm hearing are excuses, Myra. You are fit enough to move around, so you are fit enough to go to your desk job. It's not like you had a C-section or something. I don't understand how you can be so dense about the human body. I literally pushed the baby out of me. Tyler, I need to recover. I will join as soon as I feel better. I don't understand why you are pushing me to go to work. It just doesn't make sense. I was really at the end of my wits. With a crying baby and a cruel husband, I felt like my life was becoming a nightmare. I was exhausted and Tyler wasn't making things any better. I should also mention that during this time, women tend to feel vulnerable, so they need a lot of support. But my husband was pushing me to go back to work and treat childbirth like an everyday bruise. It was annoying and disappointing. I also didn't understand why Tyler was so insistent on me returning to work. When he told me the real reason, I was shocked to my core. Tyler looked angry when he said, You forgot about it, didn't you? 
throughout this pregnancy, you only did what you wanted and had no regard for me. I made it clear that I need a new car by next month. If you continue to sit on your butt and be lazy, I won't be getting my car any time soon. Wait, what? You want me to go back to work a day after giving birth because you want a car? Are you kidding me right now? How many times do I have to tell you that I am not joking? I showed you the car and everything. I know how much you have in your bank account right now. It's just not enough. You need to get back to work tomorrow. Staying on unpaid maternity leave isn't an option for you. I just blinked and didn't say a word then. I was having a hard time processing what Tyler just demanded. In my head, I was still hoping that this was just an elaborate joke. The man I married couldn't be so careless and greedy. But... Unfortunately, it wasn't a joke at all. Tyler was dead serious and his expression said as much. I calmly looked at him and said, In case you have forgotten again, let me tell you, I just gave birth. I am in no position to get back to work right now. You will stop using that excuse right now, Myra. Don't try to think that I will let you gaslight me into anything. You are fine enough to walk around, so you are good to get back to work. I am not going to keep engaging in this conversation any more. You are not thinking straight, and I don't know what has gotten into you. I'm already very tired, so just let me be. We will talk about this tomorrow. Listen to me very carefully, Myra. You can talk about this as much as you want. Just know that you are not changing my mind or getting out of work. You will go to work tomorrow, or God help me. I stuck to my decision not to engage him anymore, so I didn't bother with a reply. I was very angry and hurt. Tyler's insensitive thoughts were like a huge blow to my heart, and I totally needed a break to get my anger in check. Unlike him, I didn't want to shout and yell at him out of anger. Words hurt, and I didn't want to hurt my husband despite the absolute cruelty he was showing me. Tyler left the room and slept in the guest room that night, He didn't even want to help me with our newborn anymore. For some odd reason, he seemed mad at me when it should have been the other way around. I quietly stayed in the master bedroom, softly crying so that I wouldn't wake up my newborn. What should have been the happiest days of my life were turning out to be an absolute nightmare. I was not ready to face the real prospect of my marriage failing due to Tyler's insensitiveness. While I was hoping Tyler would change his mind and come to his senses, he was making arrangements of his own. That's why I got a confused call from my mother-in-law very late at night. She said, Hey, Myra, are you still awake? Is the baby doing well? Yes, Vivian, the baby's fine for now. You don't have to worry. You don't sound very well, Myra. What's going on? I got a call from Tyler and he said that he wants me to babysit tomorrow. What? We didn't decide this, Vivian. I have no idea why he said that to you. I'm doing well with the baby as of now. I don't understand this either, Myra. Tyler kept saying that you would be returning to work tomorrow, so he needed me to watch the baby. Don't tell me you really plan to do that. You just gave birth and you need to rest. My day just kept getting worse and Vivian's phone call was clear proof of that. I couldn't believe that Tyler had actually called his mother to come and watch my newborn. He was still insistent on sending me back to work. It was downright bizarre, and even Vivian was really surprised at Tyler's request. She was starting to have doubts that I was the one insisting on going to work, so I corrected her and said, I'm not going back to work tomorrow, Vivian. Tyler thinks that I will, and really wants me to go to work tomorrow, though. What are you talking about? Tyler's asking you to get back to work? Is he dumb or something? This doesn't make sense. We had an argument about this already, Vivian. I don't know how to get this through his head. My son is an idiot if he thinks you can go to work tomorrow. God knows what has gotten into him. Perhaps he's overwhelmed by the birth and has lost his mind. Who knows? I'm just glad to know that you are not listening to him. I assured Vivian multiple times that there was no way I was going back to work. Vivian seemed a little concerned but was relieved when I said that it was simply not happening. I didn't give her the full picture because I didn't want to include her in our mess as of now. 
Tyler was her son, and I didn't want to spoil his image in front of his parents, so I didn't tell Vivian the reason why Tyler was being so pushy. Vivian also didn't press, but said, You will let me know if something is wrong, right? I don't want you to put a strain on your already exhausted body. You need time to recover and bond with your child. I know that, Vivian. Not once have I entertained the idea that I will go to work tomorrow. It's simply not happening. Sounds like you know what to do for your health. Still, if Tyler ends up being pushy or annoying, give me a call. Max and I are just a call away, dear. Don't be afraid to tell us if you need help. I thanked Vivian for her words and ended the call. The call left me a little sad and I ended up crying again. Even Tyler's own family were being so caring towards me while my own husband wanted me to jeopardize my health for a stupid car. It was just unbelievable. However, that night I also started to see how abusive Tyler was getting. His demands never ended and every time he wanted me to buy him something. But he never bothered with gifts and never celebrated my birthday either. I never asked for big things and would have been happy with just a cake. Somehow, he never bothered with that either. Tyler was also becoming emotionally aloof and rarely said two kind words to me. I stayed put because I really loved him and always made excuses for him. When my surprise pregnancy happened, Tyler didn't even seem all that happy and was aloof during the entire pregnancy. I mean, I was the one who did most of the shopping for the baby too. I asked him to split and he asked for receipts which I provided. However, he never got around to paying the money and I didn't want to keep pushing him. All these things were slowly adding up and I didn't know what to do. I was hopelessly praying to God that Tyler would wake up the next day and realize what an idiot he was. I didn't get my wish, guys. I was only deluding myself. Tyler didn't magically wake up and get back to his senses. He did wake up fairly early, but what he did next absolutely floored me. He angrily barged into my room and immediately removed the covers from me. I was already in deep sleep after being exhausted from childbirth and being up with the baby at five in the morning. I barely slept for an hour or so before Tyler interrupted my sleep. I was sleep deprived and my brain was super foggy, but Tyler didn't pay any heed to it. He said, Why the hell are you still sleeping? It's almost 7 a.m. If you don't hurry up, you'll be late to work. What are you doing, Tyler? I barely slept last night. I need to rest. Why would you do this? Are you deaf, woman? It's almost 7 a.m. You need to shower, make breakfast, pack lunch, and go to work. Stop being so lazy and get up. The fog in my brain slowly cleared and I was immediately pissed at Tyler. Not only did he interrupt my sleep and wake me up in the worst way possible, but also he demanded that I go to work. He hadn't come to his senses after all. He was still talking about me going to work. I angrily stood up and said, Are you serious right now, Tyler? What is wrong with you? I told you I am not going to work today. I still have four weeks of maternity leave left for me. And I told you that you won't be taking maternity leave anymore. You already wasted four weeks worth of salary by taking maternity leave before the birth of our baby. You won't be doing any of that anymore. You are acting crazy right now, Tyler. You can't force me to go to work. Your expectations are getting out of hand. I need to rest after the birth. What you are asking of me is downright inhuman. I don't want to hear your horrible excuses, Myra. The baby is out already, so you can't bank on your pregnancy excuse anymore. Now, I will say this nicely for one last time. Get ready and get to work. If you miss even an hour's worth of wages, you are going to pay dearly. I am going for a walk. When I come back, you better be ready for work and have the food for me. Tyler threatened me not so subtly and left for his morning walk. I was still pretty horrified by his behavior. Also, the lack of sleep along with the added emotional and physical stress was causing me to feel very sick. Again, my emotions got the better of me and I started to cry. After nursing my baby, who also woke up from the commotion, I went to prepare breakfast. Tyler looked angry and I was actually getting scared of him. I knew how cranky he could get after his morning run, so I got his breakfast ready as soon as possible. 
I even made his favorite salad so it would lighten him up and make him ready for a conversation. Then I made the table nicely and waited for him. Tyler came back from his morning run and gave a nasty look while he went for a shower. I was patiently waiting for him, hoping that he would have a calm conversation during breakfast. Even typing this out feels surreal now. I don't even know why I tried so hard when Tyler was being nothing but abusive. I was still desperately trying to save the marriage. I still held on to the hope that Tyler would listen to me. Well, let's just say that hope was crushed in the most horrific way. Never in my life had I imagined how that day would go. There I was. One day postpartum, sitting at the dining table with my husband's favorite food and waiting for him to talk to me like a sane person. Turns out I should have just grabbed my newborn and ran. I was at the breakfast table bracing myself for a conversation when Tyler arrived. He looked even more pissed when he saw me at the dining table. He took a menacing step towards me and said, Why are you dressed like a beggar and why are you still in the house? What is wrong with you, Tyler? You cannot speak to me that way. I will speak to you in whatever way I see fit. You will keep your nasty mouth shut and do what I ask you to do. Get up, get dressed and leave. Tyler's insistence now really got to me. I was trying my best to make conversation, but my greedy husband was only seeing dollar bills. Slowly, my sadness was getting replaced with anger. I immediately stood up and angrily said, I have already told you that I am not going to work today. How many times do I have to tell you that before you accept it? You can keep saying that for as long as you want. I will never accept it. The baby is born and it's time for you to fulfill your promise. Seriously, Tyler, you would make your physically exhausted wife go to work just for a stupid car? When did you become so shallow? I'm shallow? You were the one who promised me that car and failed to keep that promise. I've been waiting for a year. I've been waiting for a year now. I can't wait any longer. My friends are already laughing at me. I've given you enough time and now I expect the car as soon as possible. I just need some time, Tyler. I already told you that I will give you the car. Most of my savings have been spent on baby stuff and you didn't even pay your portion. Just let me rest for four more weeks. After that, I will get back to work. Absolutely not, Myra. When I say you will go to work today, I mean it. I won't have you stay at home. You will either leave for work on your own accord or I will drag you out. I immediately put my foot down. I absolutely hated the way Tyler was speaking to me. I knew I had to put an end to it as soon as possible, so I stayed unmoving in my resolve and said, No, I will not go to work. No matter how much that car means to you, I will not sacrifice my health for that stupid car. So, you want me to do this the hard way? Very well. We will do this the hard way. You can't force me to go to work, Tyler. That is wrong. I had hardly spoken the words out loud when I felt Tyler's hand at the back of my head. I immediately froze from surprise and it took Tyler a second to grab my hair and drag me up. He had a painful grip on my hair which made me scream out loud. I was clawing at his fingers and trying to get him to leave me. But I was already weak and he was much stronger than me. I was screaming from pain and was really worried that he was going to hurt me. Tyler stayed impassive as he dragged me out of the house and pushed me out. He threw out my car keys and closed the door before I could get in. He told me that I would be allowed in the house as soon as I returned from work. I still don't have the full details of what happened next. I was already in a daze and was shaking and crying uncontrollably. I was also pretty concerned about my baby. Somehow, in my daze, I drove to my mother-in-law's house. I was such a mess that I don't even remember much of that. I just remember seeing Max and Vivian and just breaking down. Through my tears, I told them the entire story, which chilled them to the bone. Vivian comforted me while Max angrily called Tyler over the house. 
He was raging mad. I had never seen Max so mad before. When Tyler finally arrived, he was looking really flustered and concerned. I was still a crying mess. I saw Max grab Tyler by the collar and drag him in just like he had dragged me in. He was made to stand in front of us and both Vivian and Luke screamed at him. Max said, How dare you do this to your own wife, Tyler? This is not how we raised you. When did you get so greedy and toxic that you would hurt your own wife? Dad, I didn't do anything. I was just trying to help Myra get to work. I don't know what lies she's told you to get me in trouble. How are you still lying to us, Tyler? My friend, who you left the baby with, is your neighbor. She saw everything and heard everything because you were that loud. She also saw you drag Myra by the hair. My friend said that she almost called the cops when she heard Myra screaming. She must be exaggerating, Mom. I'm telling you, nothing like that happened. Myra wanted to go to work by her own will. I was just, don't you dare lie in front of me, Tyler. No woman would go back to work one day after delivering a baby. I am in no condition to work. I don't even remember how I drove here. I couldn't believe that Tyler was trying to twist the story to make it seem like he didn't do anything. Thank God our neighbor saw everything. She had been a huge help during my pregnancy and I trusted her because she was Vivian's friend. Her account made things even clearer. Max and Vivian were having none of Tyler's lies. They said, How dare you try to turn the story, Tyler? We all know that didn't happen. My friend heard how you wanted Myra to go to work because you wanted a new car. You physically abused your wife for a freaking car, Tyler? What on earth is wrong with you? I'm ashamed to call you my son. Mom, Dad, you're overreacting. Myra had promised me the car, and she's the one being unfair to me. My friends are making fun of me for driving a beat-up car, and I... Oh, your friends are making fun of you, Tyler? Tell me then, what will be their reaction when they see you getting in a brand new police car? What? What are you talking about, Dad? We will be calling the cops and getting you arrested for domestic violence. Tyler's eyes went wide as he saw his mother calling the cops. He tried to get to her to snatch away her phone, but Max kept him subdued. While Vivian called the cops, Max had some more consequences for Tyler. Tyler said, No, no, you can't get your son arrested. You can't do this to your own child. I will not shelter a criminal and a wife beater. Even if it is my son, you have disappointed us and done more damage than you could imagine. No, no, Dad, I can't go to jail. I'm your son. I'm your heir. We don't need an heir, Tyler. We are not that rich. Besides, I've decided to disinherit you as well. You don't deserve to be called our son, let alone get our assets. Everything will go to your child. Tyler just couldn't stomach what he heard. Vivian had already called the cops who were on their way. Meanwhile, Tyler was crying and begging his parents not to cut him off or call the cops. He even begged me for forgiveness and tried to guilt trip me into forgiving him. I simply stayed ice cold and silent till the cops came. When the cops arrived, I told them that I would be pressing charges. It's been a while since Tyler and I got divorced. Yes, I divorced him for what he did to me. Besides, he was already being a bad father, so I didn't want him around my kids. I got full custody due to the domestic violence case, and Tyler got six months of prison. He also paid a hefty fine for which he had to sell his old car. Now, I live with Max and Vivian, who have cut off Tyler for good. Tyler is now living the trailer life while working two jobs. He barely sends child support and I am on my way to get his rights terminated. For now, I am safely surrounded by my in-laws and my son is growing up healthy and loved. Pray for me so that I can get rid of his birth father and give him a new life with a bright future.